Insights into the escalating U.S.-Iran tensions, we have invited Professor Sayed Mohammed Marandi from the Faculty of World Studies at the University of Tehran. Prof, good evening and thank you so much for joining us on The Globe. Good evening, thank you. After our discussions last week, another escalation where there's new economic sanctions on the leadership of Iran and these are mainly targeted at the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. What's your response with regards to the, these new economic sanctions? I think these basically reflect a, a sense of humiliation by the United States. The United States uh, thought that it could intimidate Iranians by sending their most advanced drone that costs twice the amount of a F-35 into Iranian airspace. And they thought that the Iranians would not either not be able to uh, respond because of the advanced U.S. technology used or that the Iranians were fearful of uh, responding to this aggression. But I think the Americans were shocked both by the will of the Iranians to down this uh, U.S. drone and also the capability of the Iranians to down the drone with an Iranian-made surface-to-air missile. This is something that has outraged the Americans. It has humbled them. It has shown the international community that despite the enormous amount of money pumped into the U.S. Defense Department, the Iranians under sanctions have achieved an enormous amount of um, success in building a defensive, uh, a defensive military structure that can deter uh, the U.S. regime. Now, Prof, uh, the U.S. has come out uh, very strongly in denying the, the fact that uh, this uh, drone was on uh, the... It insists that the drone was in international waters. And uh, they state that uh, in this, uh, uh, new these new sanctions are in response to a series of provocative actions which culminated in the attack of a U.S. Uh, operator drone which they insist was on international waters. What's in the reaction? from uh, Iran leadership is the fact that this isn't the case. They even have a video to prove that. Now, what do you think? Do you think that uh, these new sanctions will lead to uh, the Iranians to the negotiating table? No, the Iranians will definitely not negotiate with the Americans because the Americans are uh, brutal and cruel and they're targeting ordinary Iranians. They are irrational and they've left the negotiating table. The Americans were committed to the nuclear deal. They have uh, violated it. They have, are forcing other countries to violate it. They are behaving like a, a, a bully, even towards their own allies. And there is no reason for the Iranians to negotiate with such a, a brutal and irrational regime. But on the other hand, I think it's quite clear the very fact that the Americans want a closed door session in the UN Security Council is because they know they don't have a case to make. The Iranians have already recovered large pieces of the drone in Iranian territorial waters, and the Americans have recovered nothing because there was nothing in international territorial waters. So this dishonesty, of course, this dishonesty by the Americans is nothing new. In 1988, when the Americans downed an Iranian airliner intentionally in the eyes of many, they said that the Iranian airliner they, uh, was outside of its corridor. They said that it was uh, losing, it was moving towards American uh, military ships and uh, the American nav naval ships. And uh, the Western media mimicked the American claims uh, completely. Only years later did it come out that the Americans were lying and that the Iranians were correct all along, that the Iran air flight was following the normal pattern, following normal procedures, and 290 innocent Iranians were murdered by the Americans, yet the American media, as I said, they supported the American position. So just like in Iraq in 2003, very few people 
or perhaps no sane person with a degree of knowledge would take any American intelligence or any American narrative uh, for granted. Now, Prof, uh, U.S. President Donald Trump has come and stated the fact that he wants that never, Iran never to have nuclear weapons. What does this mean for Iran going forward? Is that, you mentioned the fact that there is no possibility of them going to the negotiating table with the U.S. What happens now going forward? Well, the Iranian leader told Japanese Prime Minister Abe that if we wanted to have nuclear weapons, we would have had them by now, and that the United States could not have stopped Iran. But Iran has chosen not to have nuclear weapons. This is the, he, it is both for religious reasons and for strategic re reasons. And we, history shows that Iran, uh, Iran's position is validated. When we look at the Iran-Iraq war, the United States and its European partners gave Saddam Hussein chemical weapons to use against Iranian civilians and to use against their own people, the people of Iraq. They killed tens of thousands of people with those chemical weapons. And Western countries and the Western media were completely silent about the technological transfer to Saddam Hussein. Yet Iran never used chemical weapons against Iraq in return because the Iranians believed that chemical weapons were against their principles and their religion. So Iran's past shows that it has far more moral and that it is morally superior to the Westerners and it is much more honest in its position with regards to weapons of mass destruction. Indeed, a country like Iran, which is able to produce surface-to-air missiles that can down the most advanced U.S. technology, it can, it can also do... Uh, do extraordinary things in other fields, but Iran has chosen not to produce uh, such weapons. The, the U.S. problem is not with Iran's nuclear capabilities. The U.S. problem with Iran is because of Iran's independence and because Iran has chosen to be independent in, have, and have its own dignity and respect restored after centuries of Western hegemony and occupation. Professor Marandi, this is a developing story that we'll all be watching very closely. Thank you so much for joining us. That was uh, Professor Syed Mohammed Marandi from the Faculty of World Studies at the University of Tehran uh, joining us there.